I'm Pastor John McClain here with Dr. Jennifer Herrera. Actually, wait. Yes, sir. Wait, wait, let me take a step what? back. Wait, wait. Okay, wait, this is my favorite <laughs> part. I can't mess this up. Here with the superintendent of Tucson International Academy, a former TUSD educator, the author of the book, Making College Come True, and the newest talk radio show host in the fair city of Tucson, Arizona. Her name is Dr. Jennifer Herrera. Yes. We need sound effects for that, for sure. <laughs> yeah. He also known good. as Dr. J around the parts where the kids are hanging out. They they think that it, it makes her feel, it makes her seem cooler to be able to call her Dr. J instead of by the professional name, you know? Yes. And <laughs> I just do it because I can't say the R's. Yeah. Herrera, I get Herrera, it. Herrera, I get Herrera. It. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then uh, we got a super awesome special guest in the yeah. studio with today with us so i'll let you take it away dr j yes we have in studio today miss reem who i had the pleasure of working with for how many years how many years four years mm. four yeah. years she was a teacher at one of tucson international academies nice. she and her husband and just their story as we got to know them just is phenomenal and you talk about someone who understands the power of education mm. this is what our guest is bringing to the table mm -hmm. today nice. so um just uh everyone has a different place are coming from and depending on what our parents taught us when we were young is an ed education important is it not important what kind of education and uh, so she definitely had uh, some good teachings from someone right. <laughs> and she'll get to tell us all about that mm -hmm. yeah. well, awesome so so I would start by saying um, you know my take on education is that education is really a, a foundational opportunity for kids to get to learn and to get to develop rather than just being thrust into the workplace and I know when America was first established as a nation they were a frontier life and everyone had to work kids too everyone pulled their weight in fact the more kids they had the better chance of survival they had mm -hmm. and it was just a tough life and one thing that that brought them to a place of wanting a more formal education was when work turned uh less physical and more you needed some mental capacity you need to be able to read what someone was saying you needed to be able to figure out the math for transactions because the the barter system the trading kind of went away mm. and so how education was birthed here anyway i suppose there's different stories all over the world mm. was that you know they they saw the kids working all the time but the work they were learning was becoming outdated with the career opportunities for even them mm. so back in the day it's the same thing we're always trying to anticipate what the next workforce will need to know mm. and how they will need to survive in order to um, make a living mm -hmm. and so um, education was established to meet those needs and to cause people to have that opportunity to grow intellectually because intellectualism was more needed mm -hmm. than just how to mend a fence. Now, mending a fence is very important, and there are ways to do it right and ways that are not right. Mm -hmm. But uh, beyond that, transactions with the sale of the cattle and the the sale of the grain and weighing and measuring things and being accurate, those are, those are very important skills. And now the kids get them more through a math book or more through... Um, uh, reading, mm -hmm. learning to read and comprehend. So that is uh, my little background on nice. education. That's awesome. And yeah, we should do that every show. That was a cool <laughs> little like little uh, vignette right there. I well, like that. you know, I have had to think about education a lot because in order to stay in the game and want to teach, mm -hmm. you have to have good reasons why. And mm -hmm. for me, I love the idea that I get to participate in helping prepare the next workforce, the mm -hmm. next group of people who have high hopes for their families and their children children and they just want to have peaceful lives and so education can give you tools to reach that goal mm -hmm. and so there's so many different kinds of education and I love all the different kinds I love trade schools I love um, academies I love um, uh, you know journeyman opportunities and of course I love four-year degrees from a university so mm -hmm. <laughs> but all of it plays a role and we need all of it mm -hmm. I think you can never just have one type of education diversity is needed and I think it's a good thing so mm -hmm. so hearing from Miss Reem today this is gonna be really fun can you just tell first of all a little of your background um, and yeah, of yes. course. <laughs> my name is Miss Reem let's say your name um, I am from Iraq I immigrated to US in 2009. Mm. I came as an um, immigrant because we were, my husband and I were granted special immigration visa from the US nice. Army. 
Mm. Um, and for those who don't know what is it, it is um, as an award for your service with the U.S. Army mm. in the unpleasant time during the wartime mm -hmm. in 2003. So um, I have master's degree in administrative leadership. Yes. Here a few from U.S. from Northern Arizona University, and mm. I'm currently work as uh, admin assistant three, the highest grade of admin assistant with the state of Arizona. Mm. Ooh, that is nice. a good good uh -huh. position. <laughs> They're lucky to have you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was lucky to have you yes, for four course. years. <laughs> and, and I was man, I loved what you brought to the table with that. Um, how how did your so you started back in Iraq? So um, I just just thinking we can um, spend uh, each segment. We have four segments telling a part of it, and mm -hmm. we have just a short time. But just tell us um, when did things start to go south in Iraq as you were growing up? What age were you? So actually, let's go back to 2003. I was a senior. I was um, like in high school and mm. waiting to be graduated and mm -hmm. be adult. I'm super excited going to college. And boom, there was like in March, the, the U.S. Iraq war uh, took a place. Mm -hmm. And um, that was in March. And we have finals. We're supposed to have finals in May. Mm -hmm. And in Iraq, like May and finals, it's like determine your future because mm -hmm. it depends on your GPA. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not just selective. Oh, I like to go to this college. I have to go. No, yeah. you have to have a high GPA mm -hmm. to get what you want mm -hmm. and it's pretty competitive so you have to be h the highest especially I, my dream was to be in like a college of um, literatures English department mm. huh. so I really had to pursue that but then the war started e. and it was in March it lasted I believe for two weeks and in Iraq like um it's not institutional or something. It's, it is just all led by our um, previous president. So when he was taken down, everything just, we became lawless. Mm. Wow. Without mm. government. Mm -hmm. And we are just two months away from graduation. We mm. don't know if we're going to have finals, if yeah. they're going to be graduating or something. So um, everything was based on personal decisions from principle, like speaking about education and how it worked. So they decided, well, after the war, well, we don't know what are the rules. We don't know what to do. So let's just go ahead and open up the, the schools and have finals. And we just operate with what we have, uh, mm. do the same exact system we used to have before war, even though everything was chaotic and it was chaos, you know, oh, after yeah. war and stuff. I cannot imagine. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Ms. Reem is going to tell us more about her high school and how it turned out. So stay right there. Yeah, this is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Definitely go check out TucsonInternationalAcademy.com if you have a student, K-12, through that wants to make college come true in their life. We're we now return to the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Yes, indeed. That is correct. This is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I'm Pastor John McClain here with the very Dr. Jennifer Her Herrera. <laughs> <laughs> show <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> also known as Dr. J. She is the superintendent of that very Tucson International Academy. This is the academy that we speak of if you want to make college come true for your child. So go to TucsonInternationalAcademy.com to find out more information. Yes, sir. All right. And today we have a very special guest of ours, Ms. Reem. She was a teacher with Tucson International Academy for four years. Uh, she has certainly got some experiences and she has a strong opinion about the power of education. So uh, last segment we ended where she was just beginning to tell us about her senior year of high school and boom, there's a war. And it was March, and it's supposed to have tests in May. And then they decided what to do to graduate the senior class. So how did that end up? Well, just real quick, oh, I wanted sure. to make a, a point because it's interesting. One, I know how old you are in <laughs> relation to that because like, I actually graduated um, in two, right after 9-11. I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it, it's weird almost how there's a parallel because – much like you're dealing with like i was affected by what mm -hmm. was going on and yep. being i was i'm a fourth generation veteran so you know that being the case i was like i felt obligated i had to do something and i was probably in 
in Baghdad probably at the same time as you were in Baghdad. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Jeez. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're asking about how old I am. You know, if you're talking about my heart, I'm 20 years old. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, right? I'm definitely older yeah. than you. I'm not going to answer this question. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, I, you're not. I'm 35 yeah. years yeah. old. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, probably 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, 35 years young. But, but, yes, but please pick us up where you left off at um, yeah, yes. finishing high school. So we managed to do the um so we thought well the war is, is over and as i was saying you know um it was based on personal decision from the principals okay each principal wanted to open the school and operate and have the finals done and then after that they're going to decide what they're going to do um with the absence of government and then we had the interim government um led by um u.s forces so mm. but it was in interim so um i graduated i got my high GPA Ooh, and then nice. because I studied like throughout the year mm-hmm. I was prepared for mm-hmm. that and then I was accepted for English department mm-hmm. in oh, uh, wow. College of Literature and again I was super excited happy yay now <laughs> we're all adult nobody gonna treat me like uh, uh, a younger student you know in the school student and boom the next stage of Iraq uh. war started mm. um, because so we were, well, it, we thought it back then it's played out really great because, you know, I'm English department and mm. we have U.S. troops. Yeah. So you're going to graduate, work, pursue your dream. You're going to practice your language and what you learn, what you took out from the college and be a translator with the U.S. Army. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Just two months later, um, they start to target translators. And mm. I believe oh. you are aware of that. So mm. whoever works um, for U.S. Army. Is mm-hmm. a target, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and his the with the family. Ooh. So that was just disappointing. But we were just in the first year of college, so we hope that next three years that gonna change. Mm-hmm. And then oh, after that, um, we said we gotta let go. We were just gonna um, continue what we got to continue. And then that's um, what happened. Actually, the unpredictable explosions all over the place. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, for no reason, killing at all. You know, you don't know for no reason. You get, get you get killed for no reason, mm-hmm. um, and the, all the explosions. So, what takes you to go to college? You can th- you can go through either explosions, dead bodies, oh. um, mm. being attacked. Because so the last thing we hear that just because we are English department students, we are in, as a target because they don't want us to graduate and be a translator. So just right. in case, they kill us just in case we're gonna be a translator. Yeah. Mm. So, wow. um, did that stop us? Absolutely not. I <laughs> love it. What drove you to keep going? I mean, how did you resist that fear? Hope and faith, hope and faith, okay. hope um, for a better future. Mm-hmm. We know that's just in terms, something temporary, we were lawless, and mm. we always hoped for a better future. We always yes. were striving for a better future. Mm-hmm. And we know we all, you know, we're born. We know we're going to die, but we all strive for a better life, higher mm-hmm. pay, get better, uh, ha- the best house and get yeah. good jobs. You know, this is what we live for, you know, hope and faith, probably. Mm-hmm. And, and you then, knew that was a way to that path. That was a path to getting those things. Exactly. Yeah, because, boy, translators, I mean, anytime, ev- you know, in all of my life, which is, you know, not that old. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 30-something, right? I could be right? <laughs> your mother. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> You're about the same I age could be as your us, parent. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that is uh, really um, powerful because translators have always been coveted, wanted, needed for almost any language. Mm. I mean, if you can speak more than one language, that is a exactly. huge, huge um, skill set. Uh-huh. Mm. So, and, um, and again, what takes me like during that we are thinking now so we start to hide our identity and what we go to college for we don't want to say we go to english department so we are not a target yeah Mm -hmm. and another boom (laughs) my area my residential area was invaded by al-qaeda and al-qaeda is another well it is isis but within a different name it was Mm -hmm. like this osama bin Laden, if you Mm -hmm. remember so when they invaded my residential area, they decided no situate, no one, no youth can go to college because college is just um, where women and men meet and they don't want to do that. And, you know, there were some rules like if you if you uh, smoke cigarette, they chop your fingers off and women mm. have to wear scarf like back then. It was it. Yeah. But, you know, you mm. wear it based on faith. 
is mm. different than mm-hmm. like you're forced to. Mm. Right. So again, did that stop us? No. I love it. <laughs> yes. Absolutely not. <sighs> so um, we just started, we know we're, we're right and they are wrong. They are the one who should fear us, not we are. We're um, we supposed to do education. Life has to go on in its best way, no matter what. Wow, yeah. that's powerful. Yeah. So we ma- like we were thinking, sitting, well, we get brochures. Like if you go to college, you're going to be killed. Uh, Period. They this give you a brochure a on that. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> this is the, that, what kind of brochure I used to get. Yeah. It's not invitation to, to no. a party or something. Mm. No. Mm. Wow. So um, it took us one to two days to, to find out because everything is unpredictable. We have to mm-hmm. be prepared. And sadly, back then in 2003, four, um, it we always believe like, well, it's not believed, but what we, from what we see today is better than tomorrow. Right. And that's sad, you know? Yeah. So, but it took us two days after that brochure to figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. Life has to continue. We're not gonna sit down and let them control us. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing, they want us to cover. Okay, I'm gonna cover just until all the way, like I, I get to the college. And then how do they know I'm student? So we start to wrap up our books with black bags, black shopping bags or newspapers, huh. just to mm. get to college safely. Smart, so you to conceal your books. Yes, mm. so, um, so I did that uh, around like, I think for two years put your scarf before I leave. My mom hands me like, hey, uh, here's your um, here's your wraps or here's your just like food. And it's actually where books yeah. wrapped with, with newspaper or something. Mm. So I get in the car, we carpool and we got to college. Wow. Until I get to college, like the way and the route, you can expect explosions. Like sometimes, so many times, like the, the, the road was blocked and blocked and and we figure out okay why it's blocked mm. and because it was explosion so if we didn't miss it by a few minutes we would be in that explosion wow. mm. well, we're gonna pick up where we left off after this break definitely it's just so much stuff we don't even want to rip away but uh this is the making college come true radio show with tucson international academy and uh i want to think there's not gonna be a dry eye in the house by the time we're done thank yes. you for being here we now return to the Making College Come True radio show, brought to you by Tucson International Academy. Hello and welcome back. I hope you guys are smart enough to, to hang in there because we have an excellent second half of the show. That's the Making College Come True radio show, brought to you by Tucson International Academy. I am still Pastor John McLean, here with still Dr. Jennifer Herrera, also Yay. known as Dr. J and M Streets. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and we have our awesome guests here in studio with us. Let's I'll have Dr. J take it away. Okay. Well, yes. Um, so Miss Reem is here telling us about how she acquired her college education while being in her country where there was a war going on. And you talk about some obstacles. We talk about obstacles going to college here in the United States. Did you do your FAFSA? Oh, I'm going to miss my family. <laughs> um, oh, it's so hard. I'm not sure if I can if I can do the classes. But how would you like to add in, oh, and I hope that I don't get blown up on the way. Mm. I mean, there's a reality check. Mm-hmm. I mean, when someone is considering risking their life, there is something driving them, and we're going to get to hear more. But first, let's hear that story. You're going to college. Um, you're having to wrap your books to conceal the fact that you're going to college because college is now outlawed. Mm-hmm. They don't want men and women to meet each other, and they don't want this education going forward. So, yeah, how did you proceed? Um, yep. So we didn't make we didn't want to huddle in the house in fear Mm -hmm. um and have someone somebody to control us no we have a future we can we we can manage our future we can decide we can pursue our dream there is always hope there is always a good future Mm -hmm. so after leaving a house after like actually my residential area which is probably 30 miles like after with that fear like Mm -hmm. i'm not allowed to go to college Mm -hmm. Now we face another challenge, like the road. Yes, um, as you mentioned, you're probably going to get blown up if mm. you probably don't miss the explosion by a few minutes. Mm. And um, so the driver had to, well, there's an explosion. Okay, we need to take another road. And that's it. We're not going home, back home. No, we're mm-hmm. just going to take, an, take another road. Mm. And within mm. that, like um, during that time, um, we just, 
have our finger crossed there there are no uh, uh, U.S. troops passing by us because they are a target. Mm -hmm. mm. And when there is a target, terrorists will not, you know, distinguish mm. between innocents or all. I, I, I don't like it, you know, for U.S. forces as well. You know, yeah. they're doing their jobs and mm -hmm. they don't have to be blown up as well. So, um, and that happened happened to my very close friend. She mm -hmm. was attacked by um, to pass by um, the U.S. troop, and they were attacked, and there was attack bag, and she got a bullet in her head. Mm -hmm. Aye. It was that gloomy, dark mm -hmm. uh, November morning when I heard about it, and the bullet mm -hmm. was um, a hair thin um, from her brain, and she survived. Wow. Um, it was a miracle. I, that's, yeah. that's always, we live by that small hope. Like she yes. lived and did she stay home? As soon as she healed, she went back to school. Oh, I <laughs> love that. Wow. She went back to school, passing the same awesome. route she was shot in. So people mm. have some like flashbacks mm. when they have trauma. Yeah. She has that flashback every single morning wow. going to college. Jeez. Mm. And did that stop us? No, we went to college wow. for her. We continued until she healed. It's like, like you have flu and you, you feel better and you go to college. Yes. That's exactly the same. Wow. Um, it happened, they had to shave her head to, to go through the procedure of taking the bullet out. So she had to put scarf and to honor her, we all put a scarf because I don't really, because we want that. <laughs> and we decided, well, we're going to take the picture of graduation and we made it to the graduation. Oh, mm. wow. But before that, you know, um, Iraqi tradition, we have that black cloth to um, when some like to show sympathy um, for those who die. Before 2003, uh, we used to have one small cloth for one elder man or older faculty in college pass away. So what they call it, like condolence mm -hmm. or stuff. After 2003, it's, it started to grow more and become the whole wall of black claws for those killed mm. and dead people, young and old. Mm. Um, some can, could be kidnapped and killed. Some, would, uh, some could be um, died by explosion. Or So mm. every morning when we go to college, we make sure to go check that wall and see we don't recognize any name that we know. Well, I know it's harsh statement everybody is valuable it yes. doesn't have to be a person that we personally know or it's one of our colleagues but with that situation with the rate of death and killing and kidnaps we just we can do so much we can be mm -hmm. sympathy can show sympathies you know mm -hmm. for those dearest ones mm -hmm. um and yep that's what took us to um that's how much it took us so did we have yes and as i mentioned before like Back then, like in 2006 and seven, the worst two years in Iraq, um, we believe like today is better than tomorrow mm -hmm. because from what we see and we can we can get announcements through Internet. It says tomorrow is the bloody Sunday. Tomorrow is the bloody um, Wednesday, like when explosion all over across the country or ex across the the um, the capital happens. Mm. So you cannot survive. Jeez. They are just killing you before you go. You know how yeah. fear, fearful it is. So, um, yep. And wow, it that's, that's a lot. So you, I mean, is. how did you guys? I mean, your faith definitely pulled you through. Of your course. hope. Uh -huh. Your family must have been supportive. Maybe on the next segment, we can talk a little bit about how your family handled it, because that's a lot by yourself. Exactly. Well, and I definitely want to make sure yeah. we, we tap on the next segment, the transition from, yeah. from Iraq to, to America. And then definitely have to touch base on you guys' relationship and what that oh, was yeah. like. You yep. working definitely. at TIA sure. and, and, yes. and all that. But I guess kind of just uh, we have about a minute till yeah. till we jump out. Maybe of she can tell us um, about you did meet mm. Mr. Sam, yes. who also was a teacher of mine. <laughs> I'm so lucky. And yeah, tell us uh, how did you meet with all that? Uh, only if it's fast enough. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you can. <laughs> there might be a short version or a long. Oh uh, well, love and war. <laughs> we all heard about that. Yes, we still date. Well, this is a stark contrast in the within the like the college or the in the campus. That I how I met my my husband. Nice. And life has to go on. Yep. And um, we believed in love, and yep. to make a family and to make the marriage happen. 
he decided to work with the U.S. Army because this is something yes. he loves to do and he knows it's right to do, even though he put his life at risk. Mm. And I supported him definitely. I told him, you know, yeah. you are English graduate. You can, you can uh, speak English. It's not everybody can do that. That's and for it's sure. something you do. And he graduated from the same college as I do. He oh graduated, gosh. but he's still living my college because of me. <laughs> oh, I mm. love it. That is so good. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I definitely supported him, and um, we are so proud to serve the U.S. Army. Definitely. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, what a great, and we'll hear more when we come back. Yeah. And then you want to take us out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah this is, that was uh, definitely, we have a lot more to bring to you got one more awesome segment so you guys definitely don't move this is the making college come true radio show brought to you by tucson international academy we now return to the making college come true radio show brought to you by tucson international academy and welcome back to the spectacular the magnificent the vivid the vibrant the exhilarating the exciting the the wonderful Making College Come True radio show brought yes. to you by Tucson <laughs> National Academy. I'm yes. Pastor John McClain with, here with the spectacular Dr. Jennifer Herrera. Who's with the spectacular Pastor John and Mrs. Reem. Woo! <laughs> you, you, um, how do you go? Um, we called you Miss Reem because the kids, the kindergartners you yes. taught. How, did, how do you go? How do you have people call you? Um, well, now I am again teacher, but and on my business, and that's what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, later. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> great. Is, um, well, Mrs. Reem, probably that Reem for sure. I would be, yes, Aww, sweeter. That's and great. And make you look younger, you know. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you to try for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Well, we were at uh, college, met husband, had a similar mission. You supported one another. So how did it go from <clears> there? How did you end um, up from Iraq to United States, and how and when did you ever find a chance to get married? Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, to be to be quite honest and frank, we always had that thought. We didn't want to bring um, an orphan child because one of us gonna be killed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are a translator. So every morning, so we, it happened. We got married, um, and because of because we it's unpredictable. So we d we have a very small wedding. When I say small wedding, it's gonna be it's just a, a white dress, and because comparing as Iraqi tradition, when they have um, like luxurious wedding parties, so we had a small one because we had to do it, or otherwise probably the next day we cannot have it because we don't know what's gonna happen. So um, we survived with that. We were okay with that as long as we're gonna be together. Mm -hmm. And I I I supported him hundred percent. I told him, well, yes, you get to do what you get to do. You love it, you like it, and so go for it. Mm. And after, um, and after we uh, like uh, we get married, I graduated, but I honestly missed a lot of days because mm. of either the road was blocked, so we couldn't. Um, I couldn't go like attend the school every day, so I lost points. Mm. Um, and because of like I had um, honestly after what happened to my best friend, I, it took me two days to to heal mm. from what I heard. So I miss days, and sometimes, you know, it, it just, um, we hear about those bloody days that yes. we shouldn't go to college. Mm -hmm. So we, we just let it go. Okay, well, we're not going to go tomorrow because there is a threat of bloody day. So yeah. we're just going to let it go. We're going to go the next day. Right. Mm -hmm. And we know it just like it's more like psychological war that happening. Mm -hmm. And because <laughs> you see it, you believe it, oh, it is possible to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I graduated, but I did not achieve what I wanted. Like my GPA wasn't uh, as good as I wanted. Mm -hmm. So, and then because of my husband worked for, for many years, and guess what? I was pregnant oh. and I joined the army as well. Oh my mm. gosh. Right. Wow. You know, it's, That's it awesome. Is, I don't, you know, it is awesome, but you know, I was uh, afraid, you know, oh, I was sure. scared about my husband. And then now I get to do with him. I told him, you know what? We're going to ride the same car. We're going to go the same route. If somebody, if we were like stalked by somebody, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just two of us and the baby in my belly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we had to check the car before we leave because um, you heard about the stick bombs. And, oh, um, yeah. We're just afraid of them. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and we go and, and there's a stark contrast in the in the base of U.S. Army. Like, well, we, we just <laughs> I graduated from English department. I can speak English. I am proud mm -hmm. uh, of it, and he's proud of it. And we're helping the U.S. Army, so it's you not know, not everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, up at the contracts when you leave with all fears and you are watching and watching in the mirror. Nobody's talking to you. Nobody uh, spy on you. Mm -hmm. So um, we managed that, and then after that, we figured. Um, they, they start to issue the special immigration visa for those who help the US Army. Oh, awesome. So um, my husband was qualified for that because he worked for many, many years. And we moved to US. Yay. We moved to US. <laughs> nice. And um, so... Where did well, you originally live when you moved to the US? Actually in Pennsylvania, but it okay. was super cold in there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we moved it all yes. the way to the hot sun. Okay. <laughs> Much better. What extreme to the other? Uh, even though I want to <laughs> think Tucson climate is definitely a lot more like the Iraqi climate. Exactly. So yeah. We're at the same latitude, thing. I believe. That's what mm. so. Okay, mm. that makes sense. That does. Um, so we came to U.S., and um, but we came in the unpleasant time. It's just the economic crisis in 2009. Mm. Oh, mm. yeah. But did we tough. sit? No. Mm -hmm. Did we sit? No. We were striving. We were, we were working with what we have, and there's, um, job opportunities were very low back then oh, when yeah. we came. Mm -hmm. So um, he did what he could do to uh, for our family, and then he started. He got opportunity, great opportunity with Dr. J. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, mm -hmm. um, the the university I graduated from is University of Baghdad, one of the best universities in the world. That's and awesome. And it's uh, accredited, it's recognized. Mm -hmm. So that's why he was able to do some uh, credit and stuff. That's why he was able to get the the position as a substitute in the beginning yeah and he loved it yes. and um generous um generous dr j just uh, offered him a position and it was amazing opportunity there mm. oh yeah um for him i gonna let him speak about herself <laughs> when he you meet him one yes, day yes we'll have one him day. on that's right <laughs> speaking about myself yeah. now we're just more stable like three years, four years, five years after that, because I yeah. waited for him, honestly, to, to make it one step at a time. He, gra my husband graduates and then pursue his dream. And then I start because we have mm -hmm. a family, you know, yeah. we have, we need to work together. Mm -hmm. You work together. I yes. love that teamwork all the way. Mm -hmm. how, how did your parents feel about these things? Were they pretty supportive or were they, they were probably of scared. Of course they are scared mm -hmm. and supportive and they but always they believed, you know, we are doing the right thing. They are the one who should. I'm talking about they are the terrorists. They yeah. are the one who should stop and end, yeah. not us. You know, mm -hmm. yes. well, as long as you are doing it right, yes, that's it. That's you right. You don't have to worry about it. Mm. Oh, that must have been like a huge fuel for your, the fire and the passion you had to still push through and pursue. Mm -hmm. So that came from home, huh? Yes, of course. There is so no neat. one day my parents asked me to stay home at all. Wow. At all. You know, they make all the calls to see. Like, uh, I get called from my friends. Well, this this um, this r road is blocked because of explosion. And I call and their friend, okay, which one is open so I can go to college? They never wow. stopped me. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So it's so important that you have the support of your family. Even here in the United States, when they go to college, they have to have the support of, of their family. Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference. You can still do it, but it's so much better when they're for you. And it's important to start at early age. It's not at yes. 18. Okay, well, you have to go to college and people don't have to. And I remember yeah. when I was a teacher, I was, took, I was talking to the kindergartner about college and they <laughs> see me when I was go. So I was um, the first year teacher when I um, started my master's degree and administrative leadership and here is the thing so i know like back when i pursued my uh, bachelor degree it was you know it was crazy days it was war so i mm. couldn't achieve what i wanted and my gba was low here is there is no executes you know yeah <laughs> so you live in a safe country yes you know every the, you can like, concentrate you can concentrate. you, can you go have a catricity you yeah. have a catricity you don't have those mm -hmm. lamps and lanterns to study mm. um yes. to to use to study mm. yes so um there was no ex excuse i'm sorry mm. for myself to not uh, have a good gpa mm. so my dream my goal was in the master degree it is the graduating with distinction. Ooh, mm. that's so That good. was my goal. So I enrolled, I was accept, accepted to the program and it was, um, I was a first year um, teacher. 
and I teach kindergarteners. Yes. So I need patience and attention. <laughs> <laughs> and I have two mm -hmm. kids to take care of in a yes. family. So um, because I'm a native speaker, it took me way, way more than anybody else as a native speaker to be a student. <laughs> so if, it takes, if, if an assignment takes one hour from a native speaker, it takes six hours from me. Mm. Because first of all, I have to read the, sub, the, the assignment over and over to make sure I understand what the requirements are. Even mm -hmm. though, you know, it is, it is academic writing, it's academic. So it's not like you are talking and they understand you from your gestures and stuff. No, mm -hmm. you have to be clear. Mm -hmm. So I read it over and over, I make sure I understand it. And then I start to do research. I put my thought together and I search up, oh, should I construct the sentence like that or not? Well, is it on or in? I have okay. to look it up and see how much time. And I hired somebody just to read my assignment, what Smart. I put together, just to make sure they understand what I'm saying. Because it's hers, you know. It's you huge. Yes, you can hire tutors, right? Tutors exactly. are acceptable and tutors make all the difference. Exactly. So I do my own work. I just hire them to read my thoughts right. and make sure they understand me before I submit it because, yes. you know, I'm competing with native speakers. <laughs> yes, <Come on>. definitely. <laughs> I'm proud of myself, but, oh, you know, I you need to make be. sure yeah. um, I am understood. Well, we have about one and a half minutes tops. Let's talk about what you're doing now yeah, tell and the us. way people can connect with you. <clears throat> I'm going to finish up by I graduated with distinction. I am one of the <laughs> a few students who graduated with this with honor. And I worked for two years because of that. And just for that minute during the ceremony of graduation, they asked us to stand and they yes. applause for us. And yes. Clap for us. So and I worked so hard for that and I earned it. Yes. yes. Anyways, what I'm doing now, why I am doing now, I had the, you know, with the support of Dr. J and Mr. Mihan, of course. <laughs> um, so I slept only four hours every night because mm -hmm. I, I, I am up until 3 a.m. <laughs> doing my, as my assignment and then go to teach in the yes. morning. Yes. And I didn't let that, you know, pull me and she was an awesome teacher by the way thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes and then not because that i don't like teaching but you know i have my master degree now yeah. and it's in administration so mm -hmm. i wanted to do something with my field mm -hmm. so i just applied for the that administrative position in the state of arizona mm. 90 applicants applied for that one position wow mm. nine of us accepted application and six got interviewed and I got the job. Ooh, mm, right yes. That's Why I got the job? Because that master degree yes. I have. So degrees open doors. It right? does open doors. Uh, nice. And this is what the, the thing that my manager said. He said, when I opened my application, I felt you are special. There is something about you. Oh, you the are. The one who went through <laughs> that should be a special person. So it's not the degree probably itself. It's what, what took you to get that degree. Oh, that is right. Thank you so much, Mrs. Reed, wow. for being here with us. Your awesome, awesome story. We'd love to have you back again. Sure, Absolutely. of course. This is the Making College Country Radio Show brought to you by Tucson International Academy on